3292 zilizopimwa 188 zilithibitishwa kuwa na virusi hivyo hii ikiwa ni 6.1 ya maambukizi katika kipindi cha saa 24 kufikia sasa jumla ya visa 1036157 vya COVID-19 vimedhibitishwa humu nchini. Kaunti ya Mombasa lina kili idadi kubwa zaidi ya maambukizi leo kwa visa 43 ikifuatwa na Turkana kwa visa 29, Transoia 27, Nairobi 23, Kiambu visa kumi ilhali kaunti za Nakuru na Kajado zilina kili visa saba kila moja. Kuongezeka kwa visa hivyo kwenye kaunti zingine kumejiri wiki moja baada ya Wizara ya Afya kutahadharisha kwamba maambukizi mengi mapya sasa yananakiliwa kwenye kaunti nyinginezo. We wish to remind our people that we are not yet out of the woods. The pandemic is at different phases of its evolution in different parts of the country. There seems to be rising numbers in some of these other counties. In due time these counties will also be able to 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 manage those numbers katika muda wa saa 24 zilizopita watu 296 walipona ugonjwa huo 28 wakiwa miongoni mwa wale wanaohudumiwa wakiwa nyumbani na 268 wakiruhusiwa kuondoka katika taasisi mbalimbali za afya jumla ya vifo vinavyosababishwa na ugonjwa huo humu nchini ilifikia 622 baada ya wagonjwa watatu zaidi kuaga dunia na sio kwari darubini ya channel 1 Shukran sana Nancy Okware kwa taarifa hiyo. Tukisonga mbele mtazamaji jamii ya El Chamo ilikusanyika kumpa mkono wa Buriani Le Palian Le Mpakani aliaga dunia akiwa na umri wa miaka 114. Mkongo huyo alikuwa mmiliki wa kisiwa cha Kokwa kilichoko Ziwa Baringo, maarufu kama kisiwa cha Mahaba, alikuwa na wake watano. Mazishi yake hayakusheheni magari makubwa ila msafara wa mashua hukuma mia ya wambolezaji wakistahmili maji mengi kutoa heshima zao Yusuf Farah ana taswira ya tamaduni ya aina yake wakati wa sherehe hiyo ya mazishi kwenye kisiwa cha mapenzi Hali ya anga ilikuwa shwari Maboti ya kutumia mitambo yakawekwa tayari kwanza safari kwenye ziwa Baringo Safari yenyewe ikiwa ni kuelekea kisiwani Kokwa kwenye ziwa Baringo kisiwa hicho mmoja wapo ya visiwa saba kwenye ziwa Baringo kijulikanacho kama kisiwa cha mapenzi kikiwa sehemu ya katikati ya ziwa hilo ni safari ya kilomita saba kwenye ziwa lililoshuhudia ongezeko la kiwango cha maji siku za hivi karibuni lakini mamia ya waombolezaji wa kuradhi kuhudhuria mazishi hayo ya mtu aliyesifika na kuheshimika miongoni mwa jamii ya Ilchamus Na baada ya kuwasili hapa ulikuwa wakati wa kuchukua mwili kutoka kwenye boti hadi kwenye sehemu ya kaburi. Lepelian Lempakani anaaminika kuishi miaka mitano. Alikuwa na mabibi saba na kujaliwa watoto ishirini wa kiume na wajukuu tano. Kulingana na ndugu na jamaa waliohudhuria mazishi hayo Marehemu ulimpakani atakumbukwa kama mtu aliyefundisha watu wa jamii hiyo kula samaki. Ni mzee ambaye alidumisha mila na hako na history ya eh, yetu kama El Chamus community. Tukitaka chochote tunaja kwake na to guide. Although we normally say that uh, we do family planning but he has proved that with the determination with the proper planning you can have a big family and still accept uh, this is the only place where we can rush where we can come and prepare ourselves to also go and face those challenges that occur around us so i thank all those who have come to see farewell to this honorable old man ameheshimika kuwa mwanzilishi wa jamii na alikuwa mpenda mazingira kabla ya kifo chake limpakani aliomba waliobaki kuhakikisha kisiwa hicho kinabaki salama na mazingira yake kuhifadhiwa hii milima tabaki tena maana hiyo hiyo hakuna mtu yuko na rusa ya kuusa vile mwenyewe alisema hakuna hata kama uko na njaa kiasi gani pingine wewe unakwenda kusa mashamba ingine lakini sio hii shamba We know there are quite a number of touristing activities that needs to be done. Some to to destroy the natural environment. But the museum never wanted this island to be commercialized. 
And therefore, that preservation is what we as a community will want to remain the same. Ombi ambalo familia yake imesema itatekeleza kwa heshima yake. Isufar Darubini ya Channel 1. Eh, tunasema buriani kwa mkongo huyo wa miaka 114. Eh, Nikiangalia katika mtandao wa kijamii mtandao wa Facebook naona wengi wameminika sana. Mmoja anafahamika kama Paul Kimani. Anasema kuwa anapata vizuri na anatutazama akiwa maeneo ya Kiambu. Eh, mwingine anafahamika kama Abdi Maalim ako katika maeneo ya Garissa tunasema shukran sana kwa kuzidi kutegea kumbuka unaweza kutupata moja kwa moja mbashara kutoka mtandao wa Twitter Facebook at KBC Channel 1 na pia kwenye mtandao wa kijamii at Khalid Abdullahi mtazamaji naenda tu kupata eh, tama la maji kidogo lakini narejea na muda usio kwa mrefu na kusi usiende mbali Hello? Dude, United on fire. United? Rashford is unstoppable. Tell me if... DSTV, Eddie. Do you know that I get more than 20 live matches on any given week from the best leagues in the world? La Liga, Serie A, the Champions League, the Premier League. Oh, what about that? Do you have Premier League? No, we don't have that. Eddie, if you're going to spend your money, spend it on the best football in the world. Dial star 423 hash to buy a DSTV HD decoder for only 1,999 shillings. Tonight, on KBC Channel 1. Unaona ile mikutano nimetembea na wewe kwa vijana? Eh? Nimeona potential yako. Na badala ningoje aibu, that's why nimeamua ubakie kuwa deputy governor, mimi ndo nitasimama na mzee Alfani. Hiyo haitawezekana. No. No, it will never happen. I will never compromise. Ngoja aje hapa. Hope my dead body. on KBC Channel 1. Whatever happened between you and Ramon? Ramon didn't tell you anything? No. I had to speak with someone. With whom? It was Sophia. She's the one who called me. Uh, Sophia? Mm-hmm. I don't know how she tracked me down, but you see, well, she wanted to talk to me, so that's why I went out. I see. I've just spoken with the dean of the university. The charges against her were very serious. They could lead to imprisonment. El paraíso conocimos En Love Karibu tena mtazamaji. Makavazi ya kitaifa ya Kenya yataanza kufungua matawi yake na minara hatua kwa hatua kote nchini kuanzia kesho baada ya kufungwa kwa miezi saba kutokana na janga la COVID-19. Wakati huo huo baadhi ya viongozi wa kidini wamewasuta wanasiasa kwa kuandaa mikutano ya hadhara bila kuzingatia kanuni za kudhibiti msambao wa COVID-19 ili hali makanisa hayaruhusiwi kuwa na, kuwa na zaidi ya waumini moja kwa wakati mmoja. Kama sehemu ya kufufua uchumi wa taifa, shirika la makavazi ya kitaifa limetangaza kufunguliwa kwa baadhi ya makavazi na minara kuanzia kesho. Katibu wa michezo, utamaduni na turathi Josephita Mukobe alizuru eneo la Malindi ambapo alikagua mikakati iliyowekwa ya kudhibiti COVID-19 katika maeneo ya kitalii mjini humo. Mukobe aliwahimiza wakenya kutembelea maeneo hayo pindi yatakapofunguliwa. We cannot close forever. Life must continue and we must know how to uh, how to work with the, with the, with the COVID. And uh, there are certain protocols that the uh, uh, Minister of Health has, has, has advised that uh, those who are opening their businesses must adhere to. And so we have written to them and the uh, Minister of Health and uh, some of the officers have been around just to check uh, on what it is that we can do to partially open. 
Kwingineko viongozi wa kidini wanawashtumu wanasiasa kwa kutokuwa wa kweli kwenye miito yao kwa wakenya kuweka masharti ya kutokaribiana kama njia moja ya kupunguza kuenea kwa COVID-19. Wanasema wao ndio wanaoandaa mikutano ya hadhara ambapo kanuni hizo hazizingatiwi. Kasisi Paul Juma wa kanisa katoliki huko Bungoma anawarai wanasiasa kuzingatia kile wanachowataka wananchi kutimiza. They are telling us that we are not supposed to gather. We are supposed to have social distancing. When people come to church to pray, it is a mistake. But when they gather with their politics, when they gather, they don't adhere to that. So who is fooling who? Who is telling who the truth? So they are supposed to sound like role models so that they practice what they say. Huko Kiambu viongozi wa makanisa mbalimbali wataanza kutoa huduma za mashauri na saha kwa familia zilizopoteza wapendwa wao kutokana na janga la COVID-19. Viongozi hao wanazilenga familia zinazokabiliwa na unyanyapaa baada ya wapendwa wao kuzikwa kuambatana na kanuni za serikali. Mmoja wa viongozi hao Sami Nene alisema familia nyingi zilifedheheka wakati wapendwa wao walipozikwa na maafisa wa afya waliovalia mavazi ya kujikinga dhidi ya maambukizi wakawa wamegonjeka katika moyo wamekuwa wamekoruzwa meo sana na hili ni jukumu letu sisi kama wahubiri kuenda kwa nyumba kama hizi kwa familia kama hizi kuongea na familia kama hizi kuwaombea na kuongea na wao ili tukaona mioyo yao yamepata kuponywa kwa sababu kumekuwa na shida sana kwa mambo ambayo yalikuwa kitendeka hapo kitambo ama awali vile mambo ya mazishi ilikuwa inafanywa usiku ingine inafanywa haraka ingine inafanywa na kama madharau na watu wamekuwa uh, wameona ni kama wamefanywa kama wanyama hatua hiyo imewadia siku kadhaa baada ya wizara ya afya kusema kuwa iko katika harakati za kutathmini mabadiliko kwenye kanuni za kuzikwa kwa waathiriwa wa covid-19 baada ya kubainika kwamba uwezekano wa kuambukizwa kutoka kwa miili yao utapunguzwa ikiwa watu hawagusi maji maji kutoka kwa miili hiyo Beatrice Gatonyenge Teach Darubini ya Channel 1 Mzamaji sasa tuinge tu, tu kwenye ulingo wa siasa ambapo naibu rais William Ruto amesema kamwe hata sita kusaidia makanisa na wakenya kwa jumla lichatetesi kutoka kwa pinzani wake wanaodai kwamba anatumia michango kwa makanisa kujitafutia umaarufu kabla ya uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka 2022 Ruto aliyekuwa akizungumza huko Kitengela kaunti ya Kajiado alisema hatishiki na wapinzani wake wa kisiasa Naibu wa Rais William Ruto amewasuta wapinzani wake ambao wamekuwa kilalama kwamba anaendeleza kampeni za mapema kabla ya uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka 2022. Ruto aliyezungumza huko Kajiado anasema azma yake ya urais wa taifa hili inaweza tu kuzuiwa na Wakenya ambao wataamua kwenye debe ni nani atakayekuwa rais wa taifa hili. Wale wanafikiria ya kwamba wanaweza kutumia mamlaka ya siasa kukejeli ama kudungisha neno la Mungu katika Kenya watapatana na mimi. Kulingana na naibu wa rais aliandamana na baadhi ya viongozi wanaunga mkono wa Kenya hawatashawishika kupiga kura kwa kuegemea makabila. Na hakuna mtu atashurutishwa ama kulazimishwa kwa njia yoyote kufanya siasa kwa mrengo moja ama ingine. Kuna mzee anaitwa Toli Amezoea kufanya mkutano hapa ati atupagie kura zetu. Mnaweza pagia kura zenu? Haya yamejiri huku viongozi wanaunga mkono Ruto kutoka eneo la Pwani wakiwasuta viongozi wa chama cha ODM kwa maneno yao dhidi ya naibu wa rais wakisema moyo wake wa kuwasaidia wanyonge na kanisa haufai kuwa tishio kwa yeyote. Kwa hivyo Raila akija coast region alafu anatudanganya kama ambao he thinks we have not woken up. Kazene yangu mmoja niliambia nimpe Raila ujumbe. We are eyes tuko macho. I'm diverting the attention because of COVID haze. Sisi hatutaki kusikia mambo ya Ruto. Ruto na Joho si ligi moja. Hawezi. Wakati huo huo chama cha Wiper kimesema kinajiandaa kwa uchaguzi wa mwaka 2022. 
chama hicho kinachompigia debe kiongozi wake Kalonzo Musyoka kimeshtumu matamshi ya chuki miongoni mwa wanasiasa WDMK is abhorred by the reason political utterances by a section of political leaders that are likely to plunge this country into anarchy and solemnly declares that such leaders cannot be entrusted with the leadership of this country zima viongozi wote waheshimiwe kile ambacho mimi nataka niwaombe kwingine kwa kiongozi wa chama cha ANC Musale Mudavadi anasema chama chake kitasimamisha mgombea wa urais kwenye uchaguzi mkoa mwaka 2022 na kitaingia kwenye muungano wa wote na vyama yule ambaye ataongoza Kenya tukienda mbele ni lazima awe mtu ambaye ataunda serikali ana ile ambayo italenga kurekebisha uchumi wa Kenya na hatimaye mbunge wa Kapseret Oscar Sudi atafikishwa mahakamani katika kaunti ya Nakuru hapo kesho kwa tuhuma za uchochezi kwa sasa sudi yumo korokoroni baada ya kujisalimisha kwa polisi leo asubuhi nikiripotia darubini wikendi naitwa Gladys Mongai Mzomaji mwanaharakati kwenye mtandao ya kijamii huko Kisumu analilia haki baada ya mkono wake kukatwa na watu wanaodai walikasirishwa na baadhi ya jumbe zake mtandaoni Kennedy Ogendo mwenye umri wa miaka 36 na ambaye ni baba wa watoto wawili anadai mahasimu wake walimuhada kukutana nao katika kliniki ya kibinafsi anakofanya kazi wakidai walitaka huduma za matibabu ambapo walimshambulia kwa panga Kennedy Ogendo aliingia kwenye afisa za shirika la utangazaji humu nchini KBC huko Kisumu akionekana mwenye uoga mwingi ana wasiwasi kwamba huenda anafuatwa au mahasimu wake watamshambulia tena lakini cha mno anahofia kwamba hatatendewa haki miezi mitano iliyopita ogendo alikuwa kishi maisha ya kawaida lakini sasa amejawa na uchungu kiwewe na uoga ogendo alichapisha taarifa kwenye mtandao ya kijamii akidai kulikuwa na ufisadi katika utoaji zabuni kwenye afisi za hazina ya ustawi eneo bunge lake na huo ukawa ndio mwanzo wa masaibu yake. Anasema kwamba mnamo tarehe 29 mwezi Aprili mwaka huu alieleza kufadhaishwa na utoaji zabuni wa ujenzi wa darasa kwenye shule ya msingi kwa fundi mmoja wa nguo. Baadaye mnamo tarehe 7 mwezi Mei alichapisha habari kuhusu madai ya wizi wa chakula cha msaada katika eneo hilo na katu hata saa yaliyofuata. It was on uh, 8 of May 2020 when a uh, unknown person came to my house in Chemel roundabout at around 8:30 pm claiming to be having a patient in our clinic at Chemel roundabout so i decided to follow him for assistant at Jerusalem clinic in Chemel roundabout of which when i was uh, accom accompanying him to the clinic another group of people came out of a vehicle of registration number KBW 182W Toyota Felder in Chemel roundabout so i became suspicious with the group that was following me reaching the clinic door i asked this person who accompanied who, who called me from my house where the patient he was talking about was I got no answer from him instead he gave me a cut on my left side of the neck the other people who, the other person who was from the car came very fast and tried to cut the other side of my neck of which I tried to block with my the right side of my hand and my right hand was chopped off anamtaka mkurugenzi wa mashtaka ya umma kuharakisha kukamatwa na kushtakiwa kwa aliyompendea uovu huo na kumwacha bila mkono upon following up of the matter with the police in Chemel in police post the owner of this car is still at large the guy who called me from my house is still at large i, I recorded a statement with the CID the DCIO in Chemel they have the, the contacts of the person the name nothing has been done only one person was arrested taken to court and later released on cash bail 
Mwanaharakati wa haki za binadamu Bonface Akacha anataadharisha kuhusu ongezeko la mashambulizi dhidi ya watu wanaotetea haki za binadamu that the charge sheet uh, we can see that the case that was uh, being preferred is assault but from the evidence that has been uh, shown for me uh, i think this is an attempted murder for somebody to hold a knife and start cutting your neck for somebody to uh, aim a panga at you to an extent that it as you try to block it it chops off your hand it means that that was a clear hit that was meant to murder we want Kennedy Ogendo to get his justice. We want everybody who was involved in this heinous crime to be arrested and action taken. Afisa mkuu wa polisi katika kaunti ya Kisumu, Ransom Lorimodoni, alithibitisha tukio hilo akisema tayari mchukiwa mmoja ametiwa mbaroni na akawahimiza wananchi kutoa habari zaidi ambazo zitafanikisha kukamatwa kwa washukiwa wengine. Achola Simon, nikiripoti ya Rubini ya Channel 1 Weekend kutoka county ya Kisumu. Natumai kilio chake kita sikika mtazamaji tukisonga mbele serikali imekamilisha mipango ya kuharakisha ujenzi wa bwawa la Karimenu litakalo wanufaisha zaidi ya wakazi 1850 wa Ruiru Juja na sehemu zingine hapa Nairobi kulingana na katibu katika Wizara ya Maji Joseph Irungu mradi huo unaojengwa kwa gharama ya shilingi bilioni 23.6 Unatarajiwa kukamilika mapema kwa habari hizi na zingine hapa ni mkusanyiko wa habari za county. Katika eneo la Gatundu kaskazini county ya Kiambu ni ujenzi unaoendelea wa bwawa la maji la mabilioni ya pesa la Karimenu mbili. Wakazi wa Ruiru Juja na sehemu za Nairobi watanufaika baada ya kukamilika kwa mradi huu. Katibu katika Wizara ya Maji Joseph Irongo amesema serikali imejitolea kuhakikisha bwawa hilo la shilingi bilioni 23.6 imekamilishwa mapema. Uh, we have an edit with the contractor which is uh, which is June 2022 and we are already in talks with the contractor to have him hasten the works to bring the works uh, nearer uh, completion nearer to maybe by two months or so because uh, everything is now set. We have the requisite resources. We have the, the goodwill of the people they have allowed us to get into the rad and uh, therefore we think this project can be finished uh, uh, maybe two or three months ahead of the scheduled June 2022. Katika county ya Laikipi ya viongozi kutoka maeneo mbalimbali nchini wamekubaliana kufanya kazi kwa pamoja kuhakikisha amani inadumishwa katika nchi. Hii inafuatia mkutano wa faraga kati ya waziri wa fedha Ukuri Yatani na viongozi kadhaa wa eneo hilo. Yatani ametoa wito kwa viongozi kuongoza shughuli za kutafuta amani katika sehemu zao ili kuunganisha jamii. Leaders of the region, we've also failed our people by failing to give leadership or by being proactive in preventing uh, these recurring problems. Problems do occur, but leaders must lead by example and must lead from front. Na familia moja ya ukwala ina machungu kufuatia kifo cha mama mjamzito na mwanaye ambaye hakuwa wamezaliwa walipokuwa wakisubiri ambulance impeleke kwa huduma maalum. Mwanamke huyo anasemekana alikumbwa na matatizo ya kujifungua akiwa katika hospitali ya wilaya ndogo ya Ukwala na alikuwa akitakiwa kupelekwa katika hospitali kuu ya Rufaa ya kaunti ya Siaya. Alisubiri ambulance hiyo kwa zaidi ya saa sita kabla ya kuaga dunia. Niona ambulance ikifika kisha madaktari anadhani walikuwa manesi wakazungumza na dereva wa ambulance kisha akaondoka. Hapo ndipo nikaingiwa na wasiwasi na kuuliza iwapo tulikuwa tukisubiri ambulance imekuwa vipi ambulance imefika na tena ikaanza ikaondoka asikupata jibu Kwingineko polisi huko kitengela wanawazuilia washukiwa wawili waliopatikana na pembe za ndovu za thamani ya shilingi nusu milioni Kwenye kisa kingine polisi wamenasa kilo mia tatu za nyama za wanyama pori iliyokuwa ikisafirishwa kwa pikipiki huko Enkorika katika kaunti ndogo ya Mashuru Washukiwa wawili waliokuwa wakisafirisha nyama hiyo hata hivyo walitoroka they cannot come to Kitengera to need to Kajiando and escape. We are very 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 alert and our officers are following them very much and also the members of the public I'm, I'm printing with them. Let them give us information because when we kill these animals we are killing our economy, we are killing our employment, we are killing everything and we are going to destroy our, our environment. 
Wakati huo huo almashauri ya kutathmini utendaji kazi wa polisi ya Ipo imesema kufaulu kwa marekebisho yanayofanywa katika huduma za kutategemea wazi na uwajibikaji miongoni mwa maafisa wa polisi. Mwenyekiti wa Ipoa Ann Makori alisema maadili hayo mawili pamoja na nithamu miongoni mwa polisi na umma ni muhimu katika kuhakikisha haki ya kimsingi na uhuru wa Wakenya. On the other hand we have the police also. They are the law enforcers who feel that there is the, the, the civilians do not understand them and do not appreciate their work. And we all know the work they do is critically important for the stability of this nation and internal security. Hatimaye wakazi wa Sekenani huko Naro Kusini wametakiwa kuacha kuwakiketa wasichana na kujiepusha na ndoa za mapema ili kuwawezesha wasichana kutimiza ndoto zao. Viongozi wa sehemu hiyo na wazazi wamehimizwa kuzingatia elimu ya watoto wao ili kuharakisha maendeleo katika eneo hilo. Tulianza na wasichana wawili. Tumeona hawa kuna shida mingi hata wanaenda wanaomba kwa duka na wanalala usiku nje. Jackie Wambiru, Darubini ya Channel 1. Na msemaji sasa tuelekee viwanjani ambapo waliokuwa mabingwa wa ligi kuu nchini Uingereza Leicester City walianza kampeni yao ya msimu wa mwaka 2020-2021 kwa ushindi kufuatia ushindi wa mabao matatu kwa nunge dhidi ya West Bromwich Albion Tim Hoti Castle inalipa Leicester almaarufu The Foxes uongozi dakika chache baada ya kipindi cha pili kwanza kuja Mivadi akifunga penalti mbili yafuatayo ni matokeo ya michuani ya raundi ya kwanza msimu huu uliongonanga hapo jana Mzamaji Kylian Mbappe anatarajiwa kutuma ombi la kuondoka katika timu ya Paris Saint-Germain msimu ujao. Kandarasi ya mshambulizi hiyo itakamilika mwaka 2020 ikiwa ni maana kuwa vigogo hao wa ligi kuu nchini Ufaransa watalazimika kumuuza mapema ili asiondoke bila malipo. PSG inataka Mbappe eh, asalie timuni lakini huenda wakapata upinzani mkali kutoka kwa Real Madrid au Liverpool ambao wamehusishwa na usajili wa mchezaji huo wakati huo uhamisho wa Odson Edward katika Celtic hadi Arsenal utatatizwa na mfumo wa mkataba huo Arsenal inataka kulipa pauni 20 katika kipindi cha miaka minne huku Celtic ikitaka malipo ya juu Tuelke kule Italia ambapo vigogo wa soka nchini Italia Juventus wanataka kumuuza Douglas Costa baada ya mchezaji huo kukumbwa na matatizo ya majeraha mara kwa mara. Manchester United imehusishwa na kumsajili mchezaji huyo mwenye umri wa miaka 29 huku timu kutoka kutoka miliki za Kiarabu pia zikiwania huduma zake. Hata hivyo Costa haiko tayari kuondoka Juventus baada ya kujiunga na timu hiyo mwaka 2017 kutoka Bayern Munich katika msimu wa mwaka 2019-20 Costa ilichezea Juventus mechi 29 na kufunga mabao matatu katika mashindano yote. Na msemaji hapo ndo nafika tamati mwa darubini weekend na kusihi usibanduke ulipo kwani mwenzangu Mari Yombo atakuwa nakuletea taarifa za utabiri wa hali ya hewa. Mimi ni Khalid Abdullahi mwenzangu wa lugha ishara ni Lensa eh, Odingo. Hadi panapo majali yake Maulana alamsiki.
Shukran za dhati kwa kujumuika nasi katika mnyengine utabiri wa hali ya hewa popote ulipo jioni leo na tumai umeshinda vyema naitwa Mari Yambo. Itakuwa ni siku yenye vipindi vya jua hapo kesho japo na mvua katika maeneo machache. Kabla ya maelezo zaidi tupate hali takavyokuwa usiku wa leo na ni kwamba kutakuwa na mvua katika baadhi ya ha maeneo hapa Nairobi, sehemu za kati na vile vile katika maeneo ya magharibi mwa nchi. Tuamkapo kesho asubuhi tutarejea vipindi vya jua kote nchini na kati za asubuhi isipokuwa katika sehemu za Lamu na Mombasa ambapo tunatarajia manyunyu ya mvua. Nyakati za mchana kutakuwa na mvua katika maeneo kadha wa kadha zikiwemo sehemu za Kisii, Kitale, maeneo ya Kakamega na vile vile katika sehemu za Narok na Nakuru vua yenyewe ikiweza kuandamana na ngurumo za radi hapa Nairobi tutaendelea na vipindi vya jua sawia na sehemu za Nyeri na Meru maeneo ya ukanda wa pwani japo kutakuwa na vipindi vya jua tutarajia mvua katika maeneo machache tu hususan maeneo ya Lamu kaskazini mashariki mwa nchi japo kutakuwa na vipindi vya jua sehemu za Garissa tutarajia kuepo kwa manyunyu ya mvua katika maeneo machache viwango vya joto vitafikia nyuzi 25 hapa Nairobi sehemu za Meru na vile vile Machakos 36 katika sehemu za Mandera 34 katika maeneo ya Garissa na basi kwa hayo natamatisha utabiri wa hali ya hewa jioni na leo tupate sasa hali takavyokuwa katika maeneo mengine duniani alamsi